So uh, let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so I'm Antonio. Uh, I'm here with my colleague Mario. We are from Igalia, and we're going to talk about onion soup and code health and stuff that we've been doing to get the Chrome source space better than what is already. So I'm again, I'm Antonio. Uh, just a little bit about ourselves. I've been working on browsers for some time. Uh, I worked on Firefox a little bit. We started a project called Minimo. Uh, I also worked on WebKit and WebKit Reviewer. And now for the past four or five years, I'm working on Chromium, like embedding Blink itself, uh, certification on your soup. Mario? Hello, I'm Mario, and I've been working in open source for a while already, initially with uh, Genome. I'm a Genome contributor and foundation member. Also in WebKit, I used to work in WebKit accessibility in the context of the GTK port, and now recently I've been working in Chromium, most specifically on serviceification, onion soup, and the Mojo migrations that some of you might probably be aware of. So brief note about Igalia. Some of you already heard of it, so be quick. It's a highly specialized open source consultancy from Spain. We run a flat structure, which is a bit special compared to other companies. And we have different teams, some of them uh, related to browser technologies, like the Chromium, WebKit, Web Platform, and the compilers team that is mostly uh, working in things like V8 and JavaScript engines. We are headquartered in Galicia, but actually most of us work remotely from different places all over the world. Haven't got to the moon yet, but. <laughs> so this talk um, starts with onion soup. It's onion soup and beyond, so let's start with the first part. So um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with onion soup, so I guess I, it makes sense to do a quick re recap. So the motivation of this project that started four years ago uh, was that when after the blink, the, the fork from WebKit, we ended up with a lot of layers that are actually not really needed anymore between Chromium and Blink because WebKit was designed to be embedded by different um, different embedders, different clients, while, while Blink is actually embedded only by one client, which is the content renderer, right? So the goal out straight, I, I'm quoting right from the document, the design original design document, is to simplify the code base so that developers have a better experience uh, working with the Chromium code base and can actually develop features faster, right? So the plan to get to this goal uh, is threefold. So first, um, we need to replace the legacy IPC with a new IPC, which is called Mojo, and uh, you'll see why in, a, in the next slide. And second, the other, the other idea was that a lot of functionality in content render living in there now can actually be moved down into Blink, reducing abstraction layers and also encapsulating everything in, in, in Blink itself. And third, once after doing those moves, um, it makes sense to clean up public APIs from Blink that are not really needed anymore. So again, from the same design document, this is how uh, the thing looked back in the day. It's actually, it doesn't look that different today yet, uh, still, but so we used to have a browser, we, we have a browser process that used to communicate with the, with the renderer process through this legacy IPC. Uh, there's nothing particularly wrong with this, but the thing is that if you wanted to communicate between the browser process and Blink, you have to go all, you have to enter first through content renderer, then make your way all the way down through different abstraction layers, all the way to Blink. Uh, so unnecessary duplication and, and abstractions in there that could be improved and removed. And the vision back in the day is that at some point, Chromium will become like a collection of services, services everywhere. So everything will be a service running in a different process. And in particular, Blink will eventually become the renderer service. So um, these services will communicate with each other using Mojo, this new IPC. And so the Onion Soup project, what, what we are trying to do now is to pave the way to reach this point. We haven't we haven't get there yet, but uh, with this project, we now are starting to to we are now able to communicate from the browser browser directly to to Blink instead of having to go all the way through Content Renderer. Sorry, I think I'm repeating myself a bit. <laughs> um, so in terms of the work we've done in Igalia in this project, we started working in February and we migrated or helped migrate quite a few uh, modules from Content Renderer, like this 13 that I'm showing here. And as a consequence of that work, we also removed a lot of public APIs from Blink that are no longer necessary. Um, trying to give an idea of the of why this is beneficial and why this simplifies the code base, I thought that I would use this is a diagram. This is not 100% accurate. It's a diagram that I was using when I was working in push messaging to understand the whole thing. 
So on the left, you see how it was before onion souping, and on the right, you see how it was after. So on the left, up there, you see these blue boxes are blink, the red, reddish ones are content renderer, and this one here is, uh, is um, the browser process, and just ignore those two. So uh, you can see that in order to communicate from Blink to browser process, we have to go through these uh, abstractions in the public API of Blink that were implemented in Content Renderer. And these implementations were the ones that actually communicated with the browser process. So, and the funny thing is that there is no, no I mean, nobody is communicating with this process other than, than this. So there's no need to have all these abstractions. So after onion souping, what we ended up with is uh, just this three classes inside of Blink that communicate directly with the browser process through the, this Mojo services, these Mojo interfaces. So it's much simpler, I think. And oh, as a result of that, we removed like, yes, five classes and three public web, web push APIs. And Antonio will continue now. Yeah, another example, uh, as example is uh, in, in case of push, push messaging, you can see that got much simpler after onion souped. Uh, in this case of WebRTC, we're actually talking about a very sensitive feature in terms of use, uh, user uh, visibility for the feature. So everybody uses uh, WebRTC and breaking that would definitely be noticed right away by the users. So we decided to do such a complex migrations in steps. Uh, for example, we've, we've done a lot of preparation work first. In, the first thing that we did in, case, in this case was migrating from the old IPC to the Mojo IPC normally. Uh, the second thing is there are some classes in the WebRTC code that they were owned by, for instance, render thread imp, which is a content renderer concept that does not exist in Blink. So we had to change and rework the ownership of some objects. Uh, that happened, for instance, with the pure connection tracker object and the pure connection dependence factory object. So these are all preparation work. Nothing has changed uh, in terms of moving from content to Blink yet. And then when we actually started moving stuff, we did it in phases as well. So we started with the classes that were independent from each other. So they had no other content dependencies. Those were moved to Blink. Uh, and then we started with the class that were dependent on each other, but they have light dependencies. So we could just uh, move them without too much problem. And then we got get to the hard ones, which are classes that talk to each other in a very you know condensed way. So we cannot move them independently. And we have to move uh, them all together. There is some rework that are needed and all this stuff. As part of this process, we pollute temporarily the Blink API uh, because we have half of the feature in Blink, the other half in content. Um, yeah, and then uh, after we move everything out of content, we do what we call Blinkify. So basically we switch uh, stuff from using uh, SCD vector to use uh, WTF vector, same thing with string. Uh, we switch from away from using base bind to use the WTF counterpart as well. Same thing with the ref count thread safe class. And then finally, we move the stuff that we temporarily added to the Blink API out of it and we can simplify uh, the code in terms of layers as well. Uh, that spreadsheet, next, yeah, it shows it's where we track uh, the APIs that we have removed out of the Blink API layer, uh, out of, uh, well, out of, I don't know. But anyways, we've moved uh, 100 files out of the Blink API so far, so the, the API is way uh, slimmer than it used to be, it's about 87% uh, of what, where we want to be. Uh, and if you wanna track the progress, just check this spreadsheet, there's a link. Uh, and then that's all the so-called onion soup 1.0, and eventually, and hopefully soon, we're gonna start the 2.0 uh, onion soup, in which is the next phase. But before that, we have to finish 1.0, uh, which consists on onion soup in accessibility, Java, loader, and some other stuff out of content again. Uh, remove everything that still uses the old IPC mechanism. Uh, switch everything to the new Mojo syntax. So there is the old one and the new one. Mario is going to talk more about this. Continuous limiting down the Blink API to the minimal set needed. Uh, remove the so-called exported layers in Blink slash platform. And that's under discussion. Maybe remove uh, the Blink Mojo emu types, but that's completely not settled yet. 
Thank you. Yes, actually quite controversial, the last topic. So, <laughs> but it's, it's there for completion because it's also in the design document that you can check. So Mojo migrations, this is still onion soup because it's related to the onion soup 2.0 project. So the context for this task is that the original, I mean, yeah, we got the legacy API, IPC, sorry. And then the new IPC, which is Mojo and Mojo got the new types. So the original types were uh, confusing, confusing and also allow uh, error prone behavior and you understand well what I what I mean in the next slide and the new types is in contrast they are much clearer or at least in my opinion they are much clearer and also enforce the correct usage so even if you want you, you won't be allowed to do weird things like trying to bind a remote that is already bind or trying to bind a remote with with a, a temporary object that is not valid or stuff like that so the goal here was to migrate all the chromium code away from the old mojo types to the new ones and it's quite some code uh, also, just a note on that the new types are binary compatible with the old ones and there are also conver implicit conversion between all the new types, so no need to do everything at once. It could, obviously, otherwise it would be insane. So we started with this, they are probably the most basic types, the, the, the binding and the interface pointer that um, translate to the, in the new types to something called Mojo Receiver and Mojo Remote. Uh, in my opinion, I think are more clear, but, and then the other ones, interface request and interface PTR info that translate into pending receiver and pending remote. If you are curious about more conversions, this, uh, this is the reference document with all the conversions and also links to the, to the backtrack in this issue. But just to explain a bit more, um, so in Mojo, um, this, these are the old types. So in the context of a Mojo pipe with two different endpoints, you, the, the endpoint on the right is the one that implements the service. And, and there you have an object that owns the binding. The binding is for the receiver, right? The one that, um, that handles that side of the connection. On the client side, and wherever you want to use that remote service from, you have the interface PTR, which is also owned by a, by a class. And with this one, you can issue remote uh, messages to the other side. So how this works in code, you, you instantiate uh, interface PTR, you get an interface request out of it, uh, and this is a, like a temporary object that you send over the wire to the other side, and when it reaches in the other side and gets bound into the binding, the connection gets established and you can start uh, sending messages. So um, this is a one small note that I put here to show that the old types uh, are error prone in that you could do things like reusing this uh, pointer to create a new request, request two, and even, even if this remote is already bound, it is the new types won't allow that. If you try to do something similar with the new types, which is with a new syntax, like in this case, we are trying to, uh, sorry, create a post receiver out of the remote after doing it the first time, it will fail. So as you can see, the new syntax is also, I think, uh, clearer in that you don't have interface PTR and, interf and binding, you have a remote and a receiver, and then these temporary objects that you pass over the wire to establish the connections have a, a more meaningful name as well, pending remote and pending receiver. So uh, these were not the only four types that we migrated. We migrated everything and, and the other types, uh, there are many others in this uh, cheat sheet that you can check. And well, like binding set, that translation receiver set, all, all these are really intuitive. Maybe the only exception is the last one, the strong binding, which is a particular type of binding that uh, owns itself and, and gets invalidated when the connection is broken. And in the new syntax, it's, it's got a better name as well, self owned receiver. So I we don't have much time, so I think I'm not going to enter into detail. I just wanted to put here in case this here in case you want to take a look, like how the conversion is. Like you can see that full request translates into pending receiver and that binding translates into receiver. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as doing a search or replace. Otherwise, <laughs> we could call it a day uh, very quickly because you also need to look for uh, these situations where you the old types. Uh, were not failing or were using wrong behavior and, and you were getting away with it, but now you need to change the code to adapt to the new restrictions. But in general, it's, it's understandable, I think. So if you ever, if you were used to this kind of syntax, full PTR, you, 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 or full, or, sorry, interface PTR or interface uh, request, you, all you have to know is that you now have those new types to work with. So as for progress, we started working on this on, in June, and this is a graph that um, shows more or less the, the progress. I think it's quite visual. So when we started, we had more than 5,000 uh, instances of the old types, and now at this last, as, for, as of last week, we were under 1,000. So it's quite some progress what we've been doing. It's been a lot of work, 
We are 84% right now in, in global. And if you are curious about more specific detail, you can see Blink is 97%, uh, content is 89 And well, there are lots of detail if you want in this spreadsheet that is linked from here. So um, yes, I need to take some breath. <laughs> so uh, in the context, if you noticed before, um, Blink is not completely done yet. It's almost done, but it's not done. And one of the things that is blocking the progression in Blink is that uh, we are we, we are still using some old types because the way that Blink requests implementations from, from the browser process is using this in a structure called interface provider, which is unfortunately is using the old Moyo types. So um, the interface provider was his, his function is to retrieve interfaces from for several execution contexts from from different places, and the problem with this is that it relies on something called interface filters that uh, capabilities, which are very complex, and and that complexity hasn't really proved to be useful beyond um, handling and um, well expressing document scope capabilities. So the broker browser interface broker tries to fix that. So the goal in this subtask was to migrate uh, all the code from retrieving where you were retrieving in remote interfaces using interface provider to this new structure. And the progress of this task is now like 47%, roughly. This is an approximation. It's kind of difficult to know exactly the numbers, but more or less. So once this is done, we will be able to remove all the code of interface provider in Blink, and then all the Mojo types from Blink will be gone. And we'll be able to enable the press submit, uh, not warnings, but errors. And the last subtask in the Mojo, in the context of Mojo migration, is this reorganization of of Mojo files. Uh, as as with the Mojo migrations, it's not as easy as moving files around. Uh, so, but it still was needed because we there were interfaces that those Mojo of M files were scattered through different places and didn't make sense anymore. So, we just remove everything from public web and public platform and put everything in a in a specific place in public Mojo. And where, so if you now want to connect to Blink or you want to use some remote service exposed for by Blink, all you have, all sorry, all you have to know is that you go to public mojo inside Blink and all your interfaces are in there. So, <laughs> good. Beyond onion soup. Um, so this this was the title of the talk. So what is the second part about? Before we were talking about things related specifically to this project. Now we are going to talk about other. Uh, different other tasks that we've been working on in the past year that are related to improving also code health in a way. Like the first task I'm talking about um, before Antonio continues is certification. We did some collaboration on this front uh, with uh, to help migrate to the network service and the identity service. In network service was the, the first collaboration and we migrated to this. The, the task here was to migrate from the old structure URL fetcher to this simple URL loader API that was much nicer and also who allowed to actually communicate using Mojo and, and, and the network service. So all the work done there last year um, led, led to the point where we we can probably say that thanks to this, the network service was enabled in marching all these platforms by default which was a, was, a, was a major milestone. And so that, that particular piece of work was completed. For the identity service, uh, the work was, um, so the, the, people from ident the people from the identity team were interested in, in moving all this, uh, encapsulating all this logic by the signing, signing component under this, uh, in, inside the, the identity service, giving a, providing a facade to that, which is the identity manager API, and stop using uh, signing, sorry, classes from the signing components from all over the place. Instead, everything will have to go through the Identity Manager API. So our collaboration here was to help migrate to this new API and, and so that, that the identity service could eventually be a reality. So the current status of this task is completed, but in this case, completed means that we completed uh, all that was requested from us, all that uh, our collaboration here. I believe the identity service is now a reality as well. But it's been a while since we worked on that. I'll, I'll encourage you to double check. So um, time representation uh, here. The problem is that uh, there are there are there were different ways to represent time throughout the whole Chromium code base. Uh, some places the base time was used, some places WTF time, and some places doubles, just plain doubles were used. So this was not a good so situation, and the solution to it was uh, to migrate everything to base time, and eventually remove WTF time the time header as well which has been removed so the result 
of this work was that all the WTF time um, instances have been migrated to base time. Uh, all the doubles, with one exception, I'll say later, will be will have been migrated to base time ticks and time delta. The tests using clock overrides have been migrated to using this new text mock time tax runner uh, class. And finally, WTF time header uh, doesn't exist anymore. There was, as for the doubles, migration of doubles, there was a, it's a partial migration because the Blink animation engine uh, still requires doubles for representing time. So it's, it's, I, I think, I haven't worked on this, but I think the point is that it's not really clear yet whether it makes sense to migrate everything. So that's why it's a partial migration on that. And yes, I think this is the last one that I speak before you. <laughs> And the other thing is the once repeating callback thing. M many of you will probably be familiar than in Blink. There are lots of places using callback and bind that that actually aliases for um, repeating callback and bind repeating. And this is not a problem if you are registering a callback that you plan to call many times. That's, it, that's what it's for. But if you are registering a callback that you are going to use only once, it doesn't really make much sense. And it makes it hard to reason about the lifetime of the object and the ownership. It would be much better just to, so, so with that callback, you are binding some parameters into it. If it's going to be executed once, the logical thing is to, to actually use the move semantics for those parameters and not passing things as if they were going to be called multiple times. So the solution to this problem is audit usages of these to the callback and bind uh, instances and convert those ones that are possible into once callback and bind ones when possible. In this case, uh, what we did is we focused on this particular uh, um, this particular bit, which is the, in the, the, net, the net component, and we migrated all the instances there to the new callbacks. But we haven't done uh, more in this in more places because it was a bit out of the scope of what we were doing, but at least that is done. And Antonio, you want to continue? Take a breath, Mario. Uh, anyways, another thing that we've done, so you can see that we, we're pretty much talking about tasks that they they might look sim uh, simple, but they are massive in terms of what parts of Chrome and specifically Blink that we've touched. So we end up interacting with many reviewers uh, in all this. One of them was uh, this one. Uh, so basically, if, if, you, if you are on Chrome, source base, you can do base bind once or base bind repeating. And that instance of the callback itself is not thread sensitive. So you can send it across threads and et cetera. Uh, and it's gonna be uh, invoked when you run the run method. In Blink, there is uh, more restrictions in terms of uh, bound callbacks. So basically we have uh, the WTF bind, the WTF bind repeating, they are similar to base ones, but we have also the cross-thread variants of them. They allow uh, functions that were bound within the Blink uh, scope to be sent and run across threads. We've completely changed uh, Blink to be harder in that sense. And that happens because some objects in Blink, they are more thread sensitive, like the WTF string class uh, and some other ones, just to name one. Uh, we also helped with uh, migrating the garbage collectible objects that use system malloc to use the fast malloc. So everything that is garbage collectible in Blink today use the fast malloc rather than the system one. It was, was also a massive task uh, that it helped. Uh, another one is uh, maybe some people don't notice this, but I, uh, I think it's a very good uh, feature and improvement in terms of code quality. Previously, we were using these uh, two block constructions to do uh, casting from one class to another. That's very common on the layout code and etc. And that was based on macros and that, that was not easy to debug and that doesn't look good. And we replaced those to the template based downcast uh, constructions that they have in Blink now. So rather than do two something uh, we use uh, templates, as you can see, is a something, uh, two, and then something, which makes it easier for debugging, makes the code look nicer as well. But that's really the, the most massive task that we have in the backlog. So we've done like 200 or more CLs and it's still halfway from completing in a touch code that it's also very sensitive in terms of uh, crashes and security. Just going to say that there is a line in talk uh, on this, I yeah. think, tomorrow. Yeah. So. 
continuing, we also had uh, Blink in terms of the basic types that Blink uses. Uh, Blink uses. So, for example, rather than using uh, int everywhere in Blink, we are using the specific integer that we need for that operation. So we use uh, Blink. Oh, sorry, integer 64, 32, and that happens to other types as well, like uh, short and uh, float and all this stuff. So that was also a massive task that helped with catching security bugs and fixing them in, in Blink. Um, last one. Uh, to do? Yeah, I think I think I, I was planning to continue. You, you're too quiet. Yeah, go ahead. I got there now. <laughs> so uh, for another another task and, and we work on was the migration to WTF containers. So if you know or if you don't know it, uh, there are the problem is that in Blink is banned to use the containers from the standard library. The, the containers from WTF should be used instead because they are optimized for the particularities of Blink itself, and so. This was the problem, so the solution was migrated. And in this case, uh, Xing, she's going to have a lightning talk tomorrow. She's been championing this effort and migrated everything to the equivalent types from WTF. So the progress here also is completed, with one exception, which are obviously the boundaries uh, around Blink, uh, above and, and under. Obviously, either you still need to do some translation, but other than that, this has been migrated. So we consider this completed as well. And another, this was a small task, but it's still important because there were instances in the code where WTF ref vector were used and some places where the, it was not used because it's actually equivalent to base ref counted data. So Julie has been working on this and, and clean everything up and now it's, it's, it's nice and clean and that exists no more. Um, another thing uh, we work on, in this case, Yujong, is a removal of C string from Blink. Yeah, I think this was highlighted in, in this morning keynote anyway, but just to, to be more specific, the problem here is that um, despite having um, WTF strings inside Blink, C string was still used in many places, like in the, as the return uh, parameter of certain public, certain functions from the public API of Blink. So the solution here was to replace everything with uh, a standard, the stand, the, sorry, the standard, the stream from the standard library so that any call to these Blink methods doesn't need um, translation, manual translations anymore. And this is completed as well. Uh, and I think last, uh, but not least, we remove unneeded create methods. What does it mean? In many places in Blink, where the, we have these create methods for garbage collectable objects, and the implementation of these methods is basically uh, just a call to make garbage collected. So, just remove that and replace with that function and, and get rid of them. This is just, this is work in progress. It still hasn't been fixed because there are so many places that needs to be done, but it's work in progress. And this is a high level, finally to finish, this is a high level overview of, of all the work that I've been trying to explain here. I hope somebody understood me. Uh, but this is a visual way of seeing what we did. So as you can see, like many things we've been working on are completed right now. Uh, Onion Soup 1.0, very important, is nearly there. It's 87%. I personally will be probably working on my Onion Souping accessibility next, and some of my colleagues will follow with the other uh, components that are pending. Um, the migration to the new types is 84%. I don't want to commit to any day, but if you see the trend, it's not. I, I don't think it's hard to try to figure out when it should pos it will po probably be fixed completely. And then, well, the broker is work, on pro work in progress and doesn't make too sense to comment on each of them because I already did, but you have the slides uh, available if you want to check them out. And this is very important as well. All the people that work here, nine Egalians, but also many, many reviewers that tirelessly help us do this job. It's not an easy one when you get like uh, maybe 10 patches simultaneously every day to review and all of them are, uh, they look kind of similar, but with their particularities is, I, I don't know, I think, I think this this is like needed to happen really. <laughs> so and that's it. Um, thank you very much for your time. And I don't know if you have any questions or comments. Everything properly understood. Thank you.